So it's mid-December here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, growing zone 6B, and I'd love to give a little tour of my backyard forest garden. The goal here is to plant a bunch of perennial plants and trees and shrubs that all work together in a healthy, in a healthy ecosystem that support one another while also providing an abundance of food and medicine. Um, just a general walk through. We moved here just a few months ago in spring, um, about March 1st, and so everything is still really young, really new. When we bought this property, this backyard was just a lawn of grass and dirt. So what I did to um, make it as healthy and as productive as possible and to start planting out these plants is I layered down a layer of cardboard and I topped that with all the organic matter I could find. Just a few months later, you can dig down as deep as you want and you're just not going to see that cardboard anymore. It's, it's completely completely gone and it has suppressed any weeds um, and then made way for uh, all this organic matter to break down and um, provide a lot of nutrients for the plants here. Uh, I lined the walkway with some stones I just found that were sitting in the backyard and um, and I also dug this uh, a 40, uh, 40 gallon pond. Um, the One of the biggest challenges I have encountered in this backyard forest garden is the great diversity of shade and of light. So during the summer months, um, this whole area is pretty shaded by the house. Um, and then maybe this whole area back is also pretty shaded by, the, by this beautiful maple tree above me. Um, same for this side. The further up we go, it's shaded by the house. The middle gets quite a bit of sun, almost full sun. And then the back is shady, and then this is like really shaded from the maple tree. Um, almost no natural light breaks through, um, just other, you know, other than just like dappled sunlight through the leaves of the trees. So I've had to create a system that can stand up um, with the limited amounts of sunlight back here. Um, the big heart of the system right now is this pear tree as well as this pear tree. Um, this is a moon glow pear tree that I got from Stark Bros Nursery. Um, this summer it had leafed out. It hadn't added any new growth yet. I believe it was just working heavily on root production. I'm a little unsure how it's going to handle because um, it doesn't get quite as much sun as I think it would love, but I think it should get enough. We'll find out here in another year. If it doesn't send up new growth next year, then I'm, then I'm in trouble. This is another pear tree, um, another from Starks, the Starking Delicious. Both these are dwarf varieties of pear trees. They should get maybe 10 to 12 feet tall, and um, they'll create some more shade here, but I'm going to build other elements in and around them. Um, what I'm excited about in terms of handling this shade, I planted some black currants here that I got from Edible Acres Nursery up in New York. And from what I've heard, these black currants are pretty shade tolerant. So this area should get two to four hours of sunlight during the summer months, and I'm hoping that that's enough for these black currants. We'll find out soon. Right now they're just cuttings, and we'll find out in a year or two if that's enough for them. Obviously this rosemary bush has put on a lot of new growth this year, so this area it starts to be pretty full sun and pretty sunny, and I was able to grow um, tomatoes in this area here last year. Some of the things I've done in the backyard in terms of getting it ready for this um, big production load I want to put out of it is I did some soil testing and I found that sections of the area have higher contaminant um, is, is contaminated by higher levels of lead than I felt comfortable. This section right here especially it's so close to the house where I imagine a lot of lead paint chips were thrown in this section. So I did a couple things. Um, the one was I, I dug up the six the first six inches of that soil and I um, dumped them in a safe place. 
Um, and then I replaced that soil with topsoil and with compost that I was able to get for free and just continue to add lots of organic matter, um, food scraps, straw, etc. Um, and then I also just go even a little safer when I dug this pond all of the extra soil from that pond I dumped on top here so it's hard to tell in the video but this area of the garden is probably mm, 8 to 12 inches higher um, than this area over here um, so it's kind of like an in-ground raised bed a little bit just to make sure things are safe from that lead contamination I'm not gonna bother testing it again right now but maybe in a year or two I'll test again uh, most of what's coming out of here anyway is not um, salad or, or leaf stuff which is the highest level of lead contamination it's mostly berries and fruit which um, wouldn't really hold much of that anyway this is a perennial kale plant I just got um, as well as those black with those black currant cuttings from edible acres I'm excited to see this grow more Underneath this pear tree right now is a little gooseberry bush. It's hard to see because it's lost its leaves. I got this from a local nursery here in Lancaster called Off the Beaten Path Nursery. And I planted out a lot of garlic. You can see the unusual warmth this time of year threw off my planting schedule. I probably should have waited another few weeks. They've all started to come up and, and leaf out. So I don't think their bulbs are going to be as big next year as they would have been if I waited another few weeks but it's unusually warm here and so I thought I was safe but next year just pay attention I'll just plant later just in case I have some walking Egyptian walking onions some more garlic underneath this pear tree right now is some creeping thyme and some strawberries as a ground cover I um, have some rhubarb planted here as well I eventually uh, want to get a nitrogen fixer, fixer here, like a gumi, uh, maybe um, some ground peanuts or something, just to get a little additional uh, oomph for this, this pear tree. I have some lemon balm here, some more strawberries. This summer I planted um, beans in this area, just to start to add some more nitrogen to the soil, and they did really well. So this area gets a bit of sun, more so than I maybe originally thought it might. But I'm, one of the things I'm really excited about here, because of this area, it gets almost no direct sunlight. It's all underneath the shade of this big maple tree, is that I decided to plant this area out with um, forest herbs, medicinal herbs, and, and some food. So um, I have wild leeks or ramps planted in here with um, ginseng. Um, I have blue cohosh, golden seal few other things that I can't think of right now. So this whole area should be a, a little forest uh, medicinal bed, herbaceous layer bed here. I'm hoping, um, hoping that all pops up. You can see I really tried to um, add as much organic matter as I could. So I have a big pile of straw here. Um, that I'm still slowly spreading around, but for the most part, the cardboard topped with some compost as I could find it, and a lot of straw and a lot of wood chips uh, has done quite a bit. I recently just had to um, dig these, all these rocks up out of the soil because um, the path and the beds had raised up to, you know, probably another four, five, six inches and hidden some of these rocks, so I had to dig them up. So you can see I added quite a bit of soil to this. And we'll see how it goes. So this is December. Everything is kind of shutting down or shut down already for a little while now. And um, I'm excited to see a lot of these medicinal forest herbs pop up in the spring. I'm excited to see how these pear trees respond with a little bit less light than I would prefer to give them.